right. Hey, I just want to read from Psalm 127, and then we'll pray and start. Psalm 127, um, this has five verses, but this is what it says. Unless the Lord builds the house, they labor in vain who build it. Unless the Lord guards the city, the watchman uh, stays awake in vain. It is vain for you to rise up early, to sit up late, to eat the bread of sorrows, for so he gives his beloved sleep. Behold, children are, an are a heritage from the Lord. The fruit of the womb is a reward, like arrows in the hand of a warrior. So are the children of one's youth. Happy is a man who has his quiver full of them. They shall not be ashamed, but shall speak with their enemies at the gate. And it talks about, um, talks about family, talks about marriage, talks about uh, you know children and being parents and so on. But uh, but this is how it starts, right? Unless the Lord builds the house, they labor they labor in vain who build it. And unless the Lord guards the city, so the fact that um, like this aspect of our lives, uh, when it comes to excuse me, when it comes to marriage, when it comes to uh, you know family, um, so like all other areas of our lives, you know, we give the Lord the full access, right? We we turn around and we say, okay, God, you know, this this is is uh, is something that uh, you have a right to speak into, that you have a right to guide. God, etc. So um, he has the right of way in this area also. Right. So many times uh, we might say, okay, everything else, but this, you know, this is um, this is my speciality, or this I have a say in this. Of course, we all have a say, and the Lord, um, you know, uh, wants to, um, you know, fulfill the desires of our heart. Right. He's given us free will and all that. But uh, the thing is, uh, Scripture is very clear that the Lord will build and uh, when he builds he builds it in such a way that it lasts right so um, so we uh, we see that okay so let's pray let's pray and invite the lord you know for those of us who are married you can say lord i just invite you in, uh, in this um, uh, into my marriage into my role as um, as a parent as a spouse um, i just invite you and uh, those of us who are single, we can say, Lord, um, you know, I, I I commit this aspect of my life into Your mighty hands, right? So we can pray that. Okay, let's uh, let's pray. Father, we we thank you, Lord. We thank you that uh, your, your word is very clear. That unless you build, O oh God, uh, we build in vain. Unless you guard, we guard in vain. And so, Lord, we come. And um, since you are the designer of marriage and family. And the parenting and everything that is there, Lord, which comes as part of uh, marriage. Father God, we we thank you that you are the master builder, uh, you are the architect. And so, Lord, um, you, since you are the designer, Lord, we come and uh, we lean on you for understanding, Master. We draw from you, Lord, uh, Lord, what we require, Father God, wisdom and understanding and empowerment, God, um, Lord, to live and, and and to build our lives, God. The way you would want it to be built, Lord, built, Father God, we we thank you. We commit this time into your mighty hands, and I just pray it'll be a it'll be a time of building. It'll be a time of uh, renewing. That it'll be a time of renovating. It'll be a time of uh, preparing as well, Father God, for what you're doing in our lives. We thank you. We give you all the praise and all the glory in Jesus' matchless name. We pray. Amen. Amen. Okay, so um, so we've been looking at. Um, um the whole aspect of preparing for marriage right preparing for marriage and then uh specifically last uh, class we looked at uh, making the choice right um what are some things that we need to look at what are some areas that we need to we should not overlook really um uh, when we make a choice so that a choice cannot be based on you know certain uh, or one aspect only but we need to look at certain other aspects um, and uh, consider other aspects um, in uh, the person or the prospective person, uh, the proposal, um, you know, uh, that we are considering, the person whom we are considering, right? So we need to, we, we looked at uh, compatibility. Okay, so does anyone uh, recall what are those four areas of compatibility? Anyone, you can just put it on the chat. What are those four um, areas of compatibility? 
Anyone? Compatibility, right? We um, yeah. So, so it, it basically means uh, that someone the, the suitability of that person, right? And uh, it's in several areas. Right? It's 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 not just the looks. It's not just um, okay, spiritual, emotional, physical, and life's calling. Okay, yeah, that's good. So, uh, so when we say spiritual, we're saying, okay, is the person born again, first and foremost, uh, considering that you are born again, okay, is the person born again, and also, does the person believe the same way you do, right, uh, in the sense, um, is, he, is he or she passionate about the Lord Jesus, right, um, is, uh, is that person uh, really desiring to live a, a, a holy life, a desiring to live a life that pleases God, um, wanting to know more about God, you know, all those desires, uh, are they there? Second one, you said emotional. So emotional, we, we, we looked at, um, is the person in, emotional and intellectual also, right? We said, uh, uh, we looked at, is that person ready? First of all, is the person mature? Is the person, uh, does the person uh, relate to you? Right? Are you able to communicate? Are you able to share things? Uh, does the person understand you? You know, do you uh, uh, you know understand the person? Um, is the person mature? Is there a sense of companionship? All those things, right? So emotional, and then we looked at physical also. So physically, uh, you know, do you find that person attractive, desirable? That's also something that that need not be just pushed aside, but it's it's an uh, important uh, factor as well. And uh, and the fourth thing we looked at uh, compatibility when it comes to life's calling. Okay, so um, so what do we mean by that? We said if uh, you know what is God calling you? You know, while we may not know uh, all the details, all the specifics, um, or or you could know also, um, but the general picture that you have, okay, this is what God has called me to do or called me to be, right? And this is where he has called me to serve. And uh, this is the general idea. So I'm going to be living or working towards that. So does the person also uh, whom you're considering for marriage, does he or she also have a similar idea? Or is it totally opposite of what you are even considering, right? So that it cannot actually you know, uh, you cannot actually go together, travel together, right? We looked at that scripture, Amos 3 and verse 3, it says, um, you know, can two walk together unless they are in agreement, right? So it's very important. Um, so these are, you know, some of the uh, signs or some of the uh, areas of compatibility that we uh, saw. And we also looked at, um, you know, is there an appointed one, one and only, or you know, um, we looked at uh, Isaac and Rebecca's example. We looked at that, and we 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 came to the conclusion: yes, uh, you know, God will God will lead, God will uh, um, uh, you know lead us, and we also need to be seeking. Uh, we also uh, need to look at use our wisdom. Uh, we can lean on the wisdom and experience of others, elders, spiritual leaders, and um, but the thing is this that. When we make the choice, God honors that. Okay, so when we make the choice, when we make the covenant, God honors that covenant. And so, the important thing is this: that we live out, okay, that we work out those vows that we have, made, live out those vows um, that we have made with one another. Okay, so that's uh, that's the important thing. Um, so, well, the choice uh, we need to make, and we need to live out that uh, that covenant. Okay. Um, so today, just a few more thoughts on, um, you know, how do I arrive? You know, how do I make that choice? Right. And even before that, uh, am I really seeking? Okay. So that's the thing. You no, know, when we sometimes uh, we have this understanding that it will happen. Until then, I'm not going to do anything. Right? That could be uh, that could be a certain mindset saying that I'm not going to do anything at all. Okay, if it happens, I know it's God's will. Now, is that correct or is that uh, incorrect? What do you think? Okay, I'll ask Jeffina only. 
<laughs> okay, Jeffina says incorrect. Okay, so why, Jeffina? Why would you say it's incorrect? Um, or it's partially correct? Why would you? Um, I think uh, we need to prepare first. Or something. Yeah, preparation is part of it. Uh, but yeah, I, I agree. Preparing is part of it. Uh, and a big part of it. But to say, okay, I'm, I'm preparing, I'm waiting, and uh, I hope something happens. You know, uh, is that a good, um, you know, place to be in? What do you think? Yeah, I think it's a good place. Okay, okay. Okay, Jeffina, feel that it's, that's a good place. You're preparing your, and you just wait. Okay. Anyone else? Okay, we'll ask someone who's married already. We'll ask John Paul. <laughs> John, what are your thoughts? John? Pastor, also to seek. Mm. To seek, uh, which means to, um, in, in plain words, which means to, to look around, right? In the sense, you're praying, and uh, the posture of your heart is, Lord, who is it? That you're showing, um, you know, uh, the Lord Jesus uh, makes this very important statement, right? Of course, not only with regard to marriage, but it applies in a whole lot of areas. Uh, Matthew 7 and verse 7 Ask and you will receive, seek and you will find, um, knock and the door will be open to you. Um, let me just put those verses up uh, for us to see in just a minute. Okay. Um, yeah. So I hope you can see that. Okay. So, um, so the Lord, uh, you know, uh, very clearly says, "Ask and you will receive." So, so there is uh, the Lord wants to give. The Lord has planned. The Lord prepares. Um, but. The Lord's desire is that we take responsibility also. You know, when it comes to asking, seeking, knocking, um, this is something that we need to do on our part. Okay. Um, one more verse is um, Proverbs chapter eighteen and verse twenty-two. Um, it says uh, the message uh, version: "Find a good spouse, and you will you find a good life, and even more the favor of God." Okay. Um, uh, in, in the New King James, uh, it says, uh, "He who finds." A wife uh, finds a good thing and obtains favor from the Lord. Okay, so, um, so, so you know, it works both ways, right? If he finds a wife or finds a husband, so uh, the message version says, um, uh, uses the word spouse. Okay, find a good spouse and you find a good life and even more the favor of God. Okay, so, so you see, in in both these verses, we see that. Um, uh, there is this whole aspect of or uh, the responsibility of seeking, responsibility of uh, maybe you know with all this divine wisdom and uh, you know um, uh, wisdom of God and the seeking uh, relying on the uh, guidance of the Holy Spirit or the leading of the Holy Spirit to obey, right? Which means that uh, there is a seeking that's happening. Okay, or uh, you're not, you know, in a bubble in isolation, but you're actually interacting, and in a healthy manner. You know, it's not like okay, oh, I'm, I'm, will I find the one? I'm, you know, I'm, I'm scared, I'm uh, nervous, and uh, every day it's like, oh, is it going to be today? You know, it's, it's not like that. You know, in a healthy manner, you're, you're going through life, whatever it is. You know, whether it's work or you know, whatever season of life you are in, whether you're studying, or working, or in ministry, whatever, you, you're going through the normal things of life. And at the same time, you know, you're preparing yourself to be the best you who can be uh, for your spouse, for your future spouse, and to be in a place of saying, God, if you're leading, if you're guiding, you know, I'm going to be, uh, I'm going to be open, right? Uh, and, I'm, and I'm seeking, right? To be in that place. Uh, all the while, you know, knowing fully well that it's the Lord who actually brings uh, that to pass, right? Uh, uh, 
like the next chapter, Proverbs 19, and verse, verse 14 says, Houses and riches are an inheritance from fathers, um, but a prudent wife is from the Lord. Okay, so, uh, so we see that. Okay, um, so the thing is uh, that whole aspect of, okay, that's the verse. Oh, your Lord can give him a sensible wife. Okay, so, so what we need to understand is that uh, culturally, in some settings, now we might say, okay, uh, uh, in, in, in some tradition, in some cultures, um, maybe it's not okay to seek. No, I, I know that it's, it's changing. Right, uh, in some cultures, it's it's the elders, it's the it's the parents who who do the seeking, right? It's it's entirely their responsibility. They say, okay, we'll choose, um, but that is that is changing um, because um, you know they the parents are also realizing, hey, it's it's not we who are getting married, but it's it's the uh, it's our son or daughter. So you know they they need to. And you know, for they need to see if it's they need to interact, they need to uh, decide. It's their decision, right? So they also understand that. So, um, so the thing is that there is this aspect of um, you know, seeking, finding. So, uh, in 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 what way, you know? Well, maybe it's a church community, maybe it's a network of friends, maybe it's um, even you know a good uh, believing uh, matrimonial sites. Um, so all these uh, avenues, right? All these avenues are there. Um, okay. Um, okay. John Paul says uh, in our culture, seeking mostly happens through matrimonial website. So that's that's fine. Yeah. So if, even if it's um, you know matrimonial website, uh, we uh, we consider all these things, like all these uh, aspects of uh, compatibility, and uh, you know all these. Um, uh, all these various questions that you're we've been looking at, you know, when it comes to compatibility, um, we, we 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 are going to be wise, right? We're going to be looking at all that before you make that choice, right? Um, so, so that's the thing. So, so that's one avenue, matrimonial website. Um, well, in in some traditions, it's like uh, when the person meets, they talk, and then you know they take their initiative to find out and uh, etc. So, so all that. Uh, you know, it, it's fine. Okay, so so we see that uh, making the decision. Okay, uh, it's a leading of God's spirit. It's following the instruction in God's word, using sound wisdom, judgment, and godly counsel. Godly counsel would come from uh, you know people of God, community of God's people, etc. So we we're not going to you know neglect that also, right? So so we see this. Okay, Ephesians um, five. And uh, verse 17, therefore, do not be unwise, but understand what the will of the Lord is. Okay, uh, a couple of other scriptures. Do not be conformed to this world, but be renewed by, by, by trans be transformed by the renewing of your mind, that you may prove or, you know, come to an, um, come to the conclusion, what is the, or, or even test and see what is the good and acceptable and perfect will of God. Okay. So, um, so we see that there is um, uh, the, the God's uh, God's word enables us. God's word leads us to to really know and understand His will. Okay. So, uh, how do we how do we become renewed in our mind by God's word? Obviously, right with the truth of God's word, so that renews our thinking, makes new our thinking, makes new our imaginations, our thoughts, our abilities, and and. And the thing is this, the beautiful thing about God's word is that as our mind is being renewed to the truth, as our mind is becoming aligned to the truth of God, so also our desires and our choices, our decisions and everything else, right? everything else changes. So that's a good thing. You know, in the place of fear, there is uh, dependence on God and God, you know, uh, uh, Christ confidence. It's not assumption, it's not a presumption, but really confidence in God, faith in God in the place of fear, right? in the place of um, uh, wrong ideas or wrong expectations, uh, especially when it comes to marriage, right? When it comes to marriage, there could be, you know, uh, really, you know, some kind of very ideal um, um, expectation, unreal expectation, 
right? Uh, that person has to be perfect. It's, it has, this person has to be like this and that and the other and all that. So all those expectations are actually aligned, come aligned to the uh, God's to God's word, to God's uh, God's um, I would say design. Okay? So all that happens when our mind is renewed to God's word. So um, so discern what is God. What is the Lord guiding me into? Right? What is He saying? What is He leading me? Right. Um, so that uh, so I just wanted to say that um, as much as um, you know, uh, God leads us to the suitable right person, right? But that person, the right and suitable person, will not be the perfect person. Okay. So there is a difference. Right? They might be suitable, they might be right, but they may not be perfect. Okay, um, which means they have they have some areas in their lives which they are still working on building. Okay, now here's the question I wanted to ask. Okay, now we know that we cannot find the perfect person. Okay, and on the other hand, we are also considering these areas of compatibility okay so how do we put these two together okay we're not going to compromise on the areas of compatibility right spiritually are they compatible emotionally are they compatible physically life's calling etc uh, at the same time when it comes to you know uh, uh, the right person or the suitable person they're not going to be the perfect you know, 10 on 10 on everything, right? So how do we reconcile both? So um, anyone, how do we, let's say, uh, you know, you're, you're considering someone from for marriage and then uh, you know that, okay, uh, Lubega has uh, put his arm, hand up. Yeah, go ahead. Okay, good morning, Pastor, and all of my colleagues. Pastor, now. There are some things that are compromisable mm. and things that are not compromisable when you're looking for a partner. Okay. For instance, uh, as far as I'm concerned and my region is concerned, we look at uh, religion is very important because even when we see in the Bible, they never tell us to convince Satan in, in any way. We are mm. told to run when we see him. Or, so religion is very important. I think that should not go away. But there are other things. Some, for instance, for us, we fear ladies who, whose mothers, we usually in our culture, we do not fall in love first with the girl. We usually first fall in love with the mother of the girl. Because literally in 20, 30 years from now, your wife will just look like the mother. So once you, and you look at the father, in case like if the proposed father-in-law is not happy, is living a life of misery, that means that one is you, but in futuristic studies. So, so, so you should literally run away when you see that the dad is also not happy. So there are some things that I think in a nutshell that there are some compromisable things and other things that are not compromisable. Thank you, Pastor. Thank you, Abega. I think there's a lot of wisdom in what you said. You know, there are um, certain things are you know non-negotiables, uh, whereas uh, certain other things are. Um, but the but the wisdom is in knowing what right, uh, what are non-negotiables, especially when we looked at those four areas of uh, compatibility. Certain uh, you know when we look at spiritual compatibility and emotional intellectual compatibility and so on. You know, um, there could be certain things that are non-negotiables. You know, when it comes to scripture, okay, this is what it is, right? Um, uh, it's uh, it should not. Uh, I mean, the person's choice or the person's character um, cannot be contradicting um, God's word. Uh, let, let's say, for example, in the sense the person is saying, uh, "I'm a believer," and uh, having certain, you know, very uh, drastic. Um, character dysfunctions right like maybe certain 
certain addictions and not willing to do anything about it okay um so then that's that's a red flag you know now that's a non negotiable thing you cannot say okay i will uh, after marriage hopefully he will change or she will change right let's say the person is um, like a chronic liar right for each and everything the person is like for out, for whatever reason like insecurity fear uh you know so you know that's a very um, i mean very jarring very apparent character flaw now in our uh, you know in our saying um, in our conclusion that okay now the person cannot be perfect i know that this person is not perfect but i'll i'll just go with this right uh, anyway the person is a believer uh, anyway the person will change but i'll go with this now that's a very serious character flaw because the person is unable to you know uh, walk in truth and be truthful uh, and be a person of integrity even in the small matters so you know i'm just giving an extreme example okay then or it could be other things like uh, when it comes to compatibility you know we are uh, we are looking at okay emotional uh, intellectual compatibility and and we see that we are not able to relate at all you know in the sense um in terms of communication in terms of companionship well the person is is a nice person but uh, maybe the person is very moody maybe the person is very quiet and and uh, and your you know in your attempt to be um, uh, wanting to know and, and the person is like so closed right and uh, and you're saying okay uh, maybe it will change over time maybe it will it may not also right so those are things um that we cannot compromise on right uh, and these are uh, some red flags for us right so you need to you need to uh, understand that uh, and um okay let's look at some some of these um, questions you know, when when we are um i hope that you know that kind of brings some kind of um, uh, understanding uh to that th this whole area of tension of you know um knowing that the person is not perfect just as we are not perfect like we have certain certain things that are still um in the progress of being perfected by our god right even as we yield uh, and the posture of our heart is very important you know, in all this right well maybe the person is just very frank very open and saying yeah i i have this issue uh but i'm 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 dealing with it uh i'm i'm getting help um uh, or i'm continuing to you know um, um walk out of that then that's a good sign okay um also you know that's a good sign but also is it with something you know some of these core things is the person struggling truthfulness integrity um you know um, purity right uh, um maybe it when it comes to substance abuse right all these things these are these are core things which are going to uh, of finances handling finances and and all that um so it's going to really um, rock the boat right it's going to uh, destabilize the relationship so one needs to be careful right and say okay uh this is you know this is is this something that i want right now is it something that we can compromise on right uh, you need to answer that um let's look at some of these questions um that we need to ask ourselves uh, even as we uh, consider um you know even as we uh, discern god's guidance right okay let's look at these questions does this person have the traits and qualities that are important to me okay is there alignment and compatibility in all four realms is the person ready prepared or can this be addressed properly so what do we mean by that which means that okay there are in some areas i we don't see that um preparedness but is the person willing is the person you know uh, ready is the, uh, or if it's a problem uh, can it be addressed and and dealt with then and there right um are there any warning signs and have these been adequately addressed is there a witness 
in your spirit, given by the Holy Spirit? Um, do you have God's peace about this? Um, are there any other see now that's a uh, again that question you know do you have god's peace about this we need to be really careful because uh, um, you know because if we are emotionally involved in that person so normally what happens is um, you know, meet the person and then they are uh, yeah, of course, I was just talking about singles here. Uh, meeting, meeting the person, and you, you know, uh, interacting, and they're, uh, you know, exchanging texts and phone calls and all that, and uh, one gets emotionally attached you know, with all that, you know, with all these interactions, um, with all these texts and calls and all that, you know, uh, you get emotionally attached. Okay, then. The leading of the spirit, um, and also you know God's peace about certain things becomes a very subjective thing, right? Because your emotional attachment seems to override, or uh, or you know uh, create some kind of a lack of clarity when it comes to uh, the leading of the Holy Spirit, right? Because emotionally involved, your emotions are stirred up. And therefore, there is we lack objectivity, we lack clarity, that sharpness when it comes to making a decision, and we kind of let it slide. And it could be some very serious things, issues, you know, which is why it's important to um, even rely on the wisdom of elders or those who are around, spiritual leaders, you know, and say because we we might it might be a complete. Uh, smoke screen in the sense it might be complete uh, we might be completely blocked out of it right because of our uh, emotional attachment right um so those are those are some things to look at okay so um what are the other questions are there any other external indicators we have seen god's work at uh, in leading you to this right um maybe god uh, Works in different ways, like uh, maybe he's given a dream. He's maybe con uh, you know confirmed it to the word and confirmed it with uh, you know uh, another person who's been praying for you, etc. Okay, another question, very important question is: Is it mutual? Okay, is it mutual? In the sense, are both persons, that is yourself and whomever you are considering, are you both ready to say yes to each other? Okay. Or is it some kind of uh, compulsion, or maybe it's parental pressure, uh, pressure from you know whoever, whatever, which is causing that or yourself to say yes? Is it because you don't want to displease parents, relatives, uh, and oh, it's like oh, you know, uh, we've come and met this family, and you know, what will happen if I say no? We've we've spent all this time talking, and uh, now, you know, I I find this these things, and uh, how can I say no after all this? Right. So now that's uh, uh, now that's a that's a wrong uh, decision, right? Um, so you come, you're saying. You know, you're hesitating. There's a lot of hesitation. You see all these red flags, but uh, because of what has happened, because you don't want to, you know, maybe you waited for many years, and and uh, maybe you know, parents are, uh, you know, saying, okay, we've seen so many, and maybe this is the best of the lot. Um, you know, are you under pressure to say yes, right? Or maybe the other person is hesitating for whatever reason, and you're you're kind of saying, okay, you're just brushing it aside and saying, you know, in in your wanting to seek, in your wanting to pursue, um, you know, you're just overriding that person's uh, you know will, right? Um, so that's the thing, you know. So is the yes mutual? Is the yes wholehearted, or is something else? Um, you know, uh, maybe it's uh, fear, maybe it's some other influence. Which is holding back, uh, which is causing that hesitation. Okay, okay. Another thing is there support and approval from parents. Well, some in some cases uh, we know that it's it could be difficult. Like maybe uh, the parents are maybe they're not believers. Okay, and uh, uh, you both are believers. The parents are not believers, so then there could be some tension over there, some conflict there, and the parents do not want to give their approval. But if uh, 
the parents are also believers parents are also you know wanting the the good of uh, their children uh, they wanting the best for their their child son uh, the children and if they are not giving their approval then it's it's good to ask why you know, we need to ask why uh, why is it and um, well we know that in in some cultures parents might say okay i'm not going to give you all the reasons this is it i've made my you know i'm saying no and that's it <laughs> right uh, you know that that could that could happen but the fact is that we need to give time we need to give them time and ask and say you know ask you know, what is it what is the reason why it's good to it's good to find out you know, why is it uh, they might say uh, uh, um, you know i'm just you know giving these possibilities they might say I, i don't feel right about it on the inside i don't know but uh, I, i feel uncomfortable uh, feel some discomfort uh, sometimes these things are because the other person is from a completely different background right you know the in the sense uh, maybe the families are all not believers maybe the family is from a different um, you know with a different culture different language you know uh, they speak a different language a different culture so they're not comfortable right? um so they're saying no okay if that if it is so that can be worked on right so that needs time right that needs time they need to feel comfortable they need to be you know feel uh, confident they need to be able to overcome those uh, whatever those internal fears are whatever um, you know what will the other person say what will the fa- that relative say you know all those fears these are superficial things uh, that can be worked on but if there's something deeper you know they are uh, they they've seen something they've observed something and uh, they're finding it difficult to share with you then it's good to ask and find out why okay so is there approval from parents is there support and approval from spiritual elders who oversee your life okay so these are some questions even as we are considering uh, uh you know making that decision okay any questions here anything that you'd like to share um i know it's uh, very different in different cultures right so um feel free to share anything that you want to share anything that you want to ask maybe you've gone through certain things and uh, you know maybe you want to share that that's also fine uh but so the point you mentioned regarding um yeah. compatibility and uh, being open to correct is very valid uh, it's a good reminder for uh, for me also uh, mm. sometimes um you know we have to give them uh, a, a time and space for them to um uh, get into that perfection and also remembering us that we are also not perfect correct and that uh, that's a very uh, important point um yeah. uh, thank you for bringing that yeah, yeah. Thanks. thanks john yeah i think lubega had uh, something to share uh, so uh also the only thing i wanted to say is number one uh people should those who have not yet got married should not go for fool's gold fool's gold means looking at the outside and you take conclusions that will be fool's gold number two uh lastly but not least should be they shouldn't be emotionally charged they should look through the principles uh before they take decisions because once they are emotionally charged and they are sex i mean they are physically near that very person they will not think straight it yeah. will cause them problems that they are likely to, to regret in the in the next few years 20 years would be more thank you pastor right thanks libiga thank you yeah so true right so so these are some things to um, you know think about um so the thing is you know while while you look at all this and the single person might say wow if there's so much to marriage i you know i think i, I don't know if i can handle it and anybody feeling that way <laughs> you know you, you might look at all these things and oh, it seems so complex i thought it would be so simple you know 
the person will just go down on one knee and propose and i'll say yes and uh, you know uh, uh, next scene cut to the next scene we're in the church and oh and then we drive out in that car and then just married and you know we uh, we, we think that uh, why, why why should things be complex but the fact is this that um, you know like what we saw right at the beginning no um, that it's two different people well sin has broken uh, the image um, of the of the people right uh, we are created in god's image but that perfect image has been broken because of sin and at the core of it we we are selfish you know our lives revolve around ourselves um well um and we are all in different levels of maturity and and so on so so and to top it all you know we are living in an in time in a in a time and in uh, in a society where this constant change you know the the values are changing uh, values like truthfulness and uh, faithfulness and uh, you know uh, purity and uh, uh, being faithful to one who is who, whom we are married to you know all that is changing and you you see it in social media it, it it's it, it, it's it's as if you know the, the whole thing of sin is um, is it comes under the uh, under the you know title of fun you know this is what it is this is fun it's or, or the title of uh, I'm just being naughty, right? So it's all being changed. It's, it's actually you know hitting at the very fabric of truth, or the foundation, right? So, so the uh, uh, so, so the thing is the uh, the importance of knowing, the importance of preparing. Um, so you know, I get very nervous when people say, you know. Pastor, you know, we found the right person. We're getting married. When are you getting married? Or oh, next month? I'm like, wow. When did you, uh, you know, when did the proposal come? When did you meet? Oh, this last week. And um, and like, you know, trying to tell the people, please, please wait, uh, please wait, please go to the time of preparation. Give it six months. Nothing will change. Right, give it six months. Go through the time of preparation. Get to know. Um, don't say you know things like, "Okay, that person has just only got this window of time, uh, and uh, you know uh, before that they need to go to the you know U.S. or whichever country, and they need to go back, and so everything needs to be done." No, please, please do not make a decision uh, based on all that. You know, there's there's a whole lot more to marriage, and you don't want to spend the rest of your lives. You know. Uh, Going through the struggle and putting out fires and uh, you know going through all that emotional pain and trauma, right? So it's better to prepare. It's better to say no. Uh, it's better to be wise enough uh, to to say no. At the same time, I, I just want to say that it's you need wisdom and you need faith to say yes. Also, there are a lot of people who put away things because they they don't want to make a commitment. <laughs> afraid of making commitment they've seen the worst of marriage right at home maybe between their parents they've seen the worst of marriages and so they're saying if this is what marriage is i don't want it right there are a lot of people who are hurting saying you know i've well i've known many 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 you know many many guys or many girls and and if this is what uh, you know companionship is i don't want it right maybe they've been hurt before um but the fact is that all that can change. Right? There is healing, wholeness, restoration, knowing that God is the one who designed, God is the one who prepared, God is the one who prepares us um, and enables us to live this life. And he's in it. You know, we need to welcome him into our marriages. Right? Welcome him in the preparation process. Welcome him in, if we are married, welcome him. Uh, uh, open the doors and say, Lord, yeah, every aspect of our lives, God. You know, you have the right of way. Okay, right. Thank you for sharing that, uh, John uh, Lubega. Okay, so so the next aspect is this: while we are waiting, let's say uh, you've made the choice, you've made the decision, found the right person. You know that the person is not perfect, and both of you are preparing. Right. Uh, while you are waiting, okay. Uh, so uh, while you are uh, preparing. Uh, uh, you know, during the engagement uh, time, uh, there are some things to consider. Okay, I'm just going to skip over to that. Yeah. So, uh, so.
some things which are again non-negotiable right so what are these these are to say that there's no physical intimacy before marriage you just say no well you could say okay i found the perfect person we are everything is in place all those boxes are ticked and uh, you know we are all you know all compatibility everything is fine we are just you know we're, we're praying together we're starting you know morning we are calling each other praying before going to bed we are you know calling each other and praying and uh, oh even between we are sending texts verses everything so you know the thing is to we just let down our guard right we're so emotionally um, you know attached and uh, uh, and then we want to have to grow into physical intimacy right? express ourselves physically as well so well understand that uh, physical intimacy is in the context of marriage you know, god has designed sex and uh, it is to be used in the right um, uh, in the right context so being engaged is not the same as being married okay so um, so that's the thing you know so again about engagement you could have a formal engagement you could have a very informal engagement uh, you know um, like recently there was an engagement where uh, uh, one of our friends one of our church members uh, it was like a wedding like you know there were some three messages <laughs> and there was a worship uh, you know worship team there was a time of worship it was like a big service uh, uh, and well, people coming and you know wishing uh, after the engagement and taking photos and all that so uh, it was a big thing you know it can be a formal thing where both families are involved and or it could be a very informal thing where it's just the two people saying you know uh, you know um, getting engaged but whatever it is um, from the time of engagement till the marriage vows are made the covenant is made okay, you are not married um so understand that okay um so whatever uh, rights and privileges and responsibilities we have in the context of marriage does not come here if we don't have those rights we don't have those privileges uh, when we are in the engagement period we need to understand that so uh, physical intimacy or a sexual relationship with the spouse uh, it is with the spouse and not with the fiance. Okay, by, by fiance we mean the person whom we are engaged to. Okay, so very clear. Um, let's look at a couple of scriptures. Um, look at um, uh, one Thessalonians four uh, three to five. Okay, I, I don't have it on the slide. But uh, yeah, you can look at that. One Thessalonians four, verses three to five. It's there in the notes. Um, but I just want to read from the New King James before we read from the um, uh, message version. Okay, let's. Um, okay, one Thessalonians four, three to five. For this is the will of God, your sanctification, that you should abstain from sexual immorality that each of you should know how to possess his own vessel in sanctification and honor, not in passion of lust, like the Gentiles who do not know God. Okay, So this is the will of God. This is the desire of God. Verse 3, very clear. Your sanctification, that you should abstain, uh, abstain from sexual immorality. So, um, you know, sex before marriage is sexual immorality. Right, it's it's uh, it's not right, and uh, the Bible has a word for it. The old uh, word, uh, or in the English word, which is used is fornication. Right, uh, even though you could be engaged, uh, uh, it's not right to indulge in uh, sex before marriage. Okay, so very very clear. Okay, um, and also uh, for those of us who are married, then any other form of extra marital sexual relationship is sin okay for god's eyes it is sin therefore we need to uh, keep ourselves pure uh, at all times right okay we'll take a break and then we'll come back uh, and continue